In Rome, in the middle of the fifth century, the station day of Wednesday in the week before the first Sunday of Lent was transformed into a full liturgical day with its own service of worship. In the sixth century, persons who were engaged in public penitence during the days preceding Lent wore rough cloth, something like burlap, and a covering of ashes. They were joined in their public penitence by sympathetic priests who covered themselves with ashes as well. By the seventh century, the service on the Wednesday before the beginning of Lent became known as Ash Wednesday because it included the rite of the imposition of ashes. In the 10th to 11th century, when the primitive discipline of public penitence had become obsolete, Christians generally associated themselves with a modified practice of receiving blessed ashes on Ash Wednesday hearing seven penitential psalms and being reminded, thou art dust and unto dust shalt thou return. In other words, as with all forms of worship, the practice changed with the times. And so it is again today. We realized last year that many of you watched this pre-recorded worship on your own time and in your own way. It occurred to us that perhaps this is a preferable way to begin the Lenten season, a quiet time of reflection, music, and readings that you can each watch individually. We all need time in our faith practices for quiet reflection, for pondering our mistakes and shortcomings, for prayer, for understanding our human limitations. According to the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus urged his disciples to resist public piety, to fast without an ex expectation of reward, to go into a room, shut the door, and pray in secret. We are offering you this resource for your own quiet devotion time as we begin this season of Lent. I am Carla Bailey, pastor and teacher of Pilgrim Congregational Church of Duluth. I'm joined in this service of worship by pianists Patrick Colvin and Jessica Schroeder, soprano soloist Jane Killo, and cellist Byron Klimek. Our service is recorded by Emmeline Beaster and Deb Devaney. Welcome to this time of quiet worship. Thank you. 
Hear these words from the 51st Psalm. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be cleaner than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. Oh, 
The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 1 through 6 and 16 through 21. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from God in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your alms may be done in secret, and God, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to God who is in secret and God who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. When you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by God who is in secret. And God who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consume and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also.
Beloved, let us pray. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of the saints in heaven and on earth that we have failed you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with all our heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us. We have turned away from your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O God. We confess to you our unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience in our lives our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of others, our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves, our negligence in prayer, and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. Accept our repentance, O God, for the wrongs we have done, for our neglect of human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, for all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudices and contempt toward those who differ from us. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear our prayers, for your mercy is great. Give us the hope that in you there is mercy for all of us forgiveness of our sins, and strength upon which we might draw to live in honesty of purpose and generosity of spirit. May we enter this season of Lent with humility, hope, and trust in you, our gracious God. Amen.